What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Hero vs. Zero. This is going to be week three, our third challenge, and wait, our challenge? Who who do I have with me? None other than the Hero vs. Zero Hall of Famer, previous three-time champion. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? <laughs> oh, for one episode, can you just not? <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, friends. It's me, Nate. I'm, I'm here again. Yep, he's back. And uh, hopefully he's here to stay. But <laughs> um, you guys had a lot of fun. And I, I had a lot of fun watching your guys' battle. I know Nate did too. He watched every single battle. It was really at the edge of his seat. Popcorn and everything. I um, was. You know what? <laughs> it was so good. Yes. Um, you guys had some excellent Pokemon matches. It was really fun talking with all of you in the Discord. Um, it was really fun seeing all of you watch each other's battles and get excited with the team building, even, you know, sharing some tips and tricks with each other, um, even though you guys were going to be opponents. Uh, but yeah, overall there were eight people who participated, so thank you to everyone who participated. Um, I'd like to go through the rankings, and while that's going on, you're going to see on screen some clips from the battles, some, you know, portions of the replays, just to show off some of the really cool teams you guys created. Uh, some really cool weather-based themes, or um, I think there was even Trick Room at one point, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but regardless, there was quite a variety of Pokemon, and something else that was really cool is that no one person was particularly familiar with the, the tier that was used, Gen 8 UU. So it felt like everybody was really getting to use Pokemon that they normally don't get to mess around with, and I hope that it was fun for everyone in that regard. But yeah, so as you're watching some of the cool clips on screen right now, let's go through the standings. So there were eight participants in total, and tied for seventh place were Alex, aka Bidoofus, and Renin. So thank you so much for participating. Uh, you'll be awarded one point for your participation. And thank you for gracing us with your really interesting sets, Alex. Those were some of the most entertaining <laughs> matches of Pokemon I've seen in a long time. Um, and then tied for fifth place, we have Siege of Pancake and Nyrock. Both of these battlers won one game, but then lost two games. This was a double elimination tournament. Uh, both of them are relative newcomers to Pokemon who have some experience with competitive Pokemon, either via watching in the past or participating in a previous Hero vs. Zero tournament, um, but weren't true veterans. And so it was really impressive to see them learn throughout the matches and learn from a lot of their co-competitors. Um, so that was really fun to see, and I hope they had a lot of fun um, participating as well. And then we get to the top four, the final four. Um, in fourth place, we have last week's champion, Ben, who won two games, but then lost two games as well, and is getting fourth place. It's actually really interesting. Nate can comment on this as well. but. Ben is not quite a veteran of Pokemon, though does have some competitive experience having participated in a draft league, actually, that I was in at one point and has participated in previous Hero vs. Zero tournaments, uh, but is not quite the Pokemon aficionado. And despite this, despite even last season as well, um, not placing in you know the top three for the Hero vs. Zero Pokemon tournament, still was able to win the entire season. So it'll be interesting to see how... Um, even though Ben actually did a little bit better this tournament than last tournament, uh, it, Ben's going to be able to work with that setback and still aim for that top spot. But yeah, so congrats to Ben on getting fourth place. And then in third place, we have one of the newcomers to Hero vs. Zero. We have Beechamp, who also got third place last week. Um, but Beechamp, I don't know much about Beechamp's competitive Pokemon history, however, he played really well. It showed that he had some experience building teams that were both creative, but, you know, had quite a bit of synergy. And more importantly, beyond just the team building, was the ability to actually play and integrate strategy into each turn. And so, um, I was very pleasantly surprised to see one of the newcomers to Hero vs. Zero play so well. And then we have our final two. Uh, obviously, all the people who participated in the tournament know their results, but maybe to those excitedly sitting at their seats um, who maybe didn't watch the tournament, uh, we'll be excited to know that second place was Leo, a Pokemon veteran who has done really well in previous Hero vs. Zero Pokemon tournaments. Um, came in second place this time around, and it's going to be... Oh, actually, I'll, I'll get into the points later. Um, but Leo is always fun to watch battle. He plays really well 
Um, he makes aggressive, you know, double switches when necessary. He makes predictions when necessary, while also incorporating a good amount of balance. And the teams uh, that Leo brought really had quite a bit of synergy and util utilized Pokemon in, in ways that I hadn't expected. So um, it was really fun to watch Leo battle, as it always is. And congrats on that second place finish. It's really impressive. And then. Last, but certainly not least, almost actually definitely not least, definitely the opposite of least. <laughs> in first place, we have Risa, who won every single set that she played. Um, they were really intense matches all the way at the end. Those grand finals and win finals, or winner's finals uh, sets were, were really close and, you know, had me on the edge of my seat. But she did it. She didn't drop a single set the entire tournament and did really well. So congratulations, Risa. You had some excellent teams, some really fun teams. Um, some really, you know, interesting gimmicky teams at times too, uh, but also, you know, a, quite a bit of variety. I think something that was really great was, you know, particularly Risa's final set against Leo um, was an excellent match. You could tell there was a lot of top play or top level mind play going on in that set. And Risa has done incredibly well. Risa's first encounter with competitive Pokemon was actually one of the first, uh, was an earlier Hero vs. Zero Pokemon tournament. And since then, she has continuously been involved in draft leagues and, you know, playing Pokemon Showdown online and, you know, other uh, Hero vs. Zero Pokemon tournaments. And so it's really cool to see it culminate in her first place finish in this year's tournament. So congratulations to everybody um, who participated and at the very least had fun or learned a little bit more about Pokemon. It was really fun getting to see you guys battle over the past couple weeks, and I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. But... That's uh, that's about all there is. Actually, no. There's a little more to say. Point allotment. Um, so because there are tend to be or there tend to be more participants in this uh, tournament or this event compared to the previous one, and because they are those participants are stratified a little bit more easily based on tournament results, uh, the point distribution is a little bit different. So the the people who participated but did not win a match will be allotted one point. The people who participated and won at least one match will get two points for completion. Fourth place will get three points, third place will get four points, second place will get five points, and first place will be given six points. And if that's a bit confusing, don't worry. Um, in just a minute, I'll be going over the um, point totals for the season so far. Okay, so <laughs> technical issues aside, let's talk about the standings for the week. So after the first two challenges, in third place, with seven points, we have B-Champ, who aptly has gotten third place in both of the challenges so far. <laughs> and then in second place, with eight points, we have Ben, who is still, again, uh, ranked very highly from that first place finish in the first week's challenge. And then in first place, we have Risa with ten points, who has gotten first now in this Pokemon tournament, but then also got second during the first week's challenge. As far as other competitors go who are not in the top three, it's still very much within reach. Uh, Leo, who didn't even participate in the first challenge, is currently at five points. Nyrock and Siege of Pancake, who both com who've completed both challenges for uh, the past two weeks, are at four points. Renine, who has participated in both challenges, is at two points. And Alex, who participated in just this challenge, um, is at one point. So the differentials between a lot of these positions are actually quite close. Uh, so even if you feel like you haven't been placing particularly well, uh, know that you're still very much within reach of you know the final top three over the next few weeks. And with that, I think I'll finally let Nate talk for a little bit as we get into this week's challenge. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas, for kind of you to hand over in such a way. And the next challenge is... It's Super Meat Boy. And Super Woo. Meat Boy is a really tight platformer, which me and Nick like very much. Uh, there's no RNG, um, super tight controls, which makes it a perfect candidate for a challenge like this. Now, I hear you asking, Nick, what kind of challenge are we talking about? <laughs> well, the challenge is to complete the Dark World um, version of the first, which is the first world of the game. Uh, now, Nick, do you want to tell us a little bit about your difficulty? Oh man, Nate, do I ever. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm so excited to hear about it. Um, so, the, the regular challenge, or the regular challenge difficulty, is basically going to be to complete the forest, the dark world, within four minutes. Deaths are allowed, and there's not really too much more to it. It's just complete levels 1 through 20 within four minutes. 
and that time will be from the moment the very first level starts all the way till the very end of that 20th level. And something that might not be apparent right now, but will be apparent when you're playing through the levels, is that once you start that first level, after you complete that, you'll get that instant replay thing, you'll try to mash through, and then you'll automatically be, be brought to the second level. And so there's this nice flow through all 20 levels, and there's not a lot of menuing throughout the world and selecting levels and selecting characters again, etc. And Nate will get into more of the details about characters and all that, but that's, that's the gist of the base difficulty. However, as always, there is a Nate, well, except for the Pokemon tournaments, there is a Nate difficulty, <laughs> which is that extra level of uh, perfection that Nate expects of you guys. So why don't you, why don't you hit him with that? I'll hit him with it, Nick. Don't you worry. Oh yeah, hit him uh, real good with it. <laughs> so the Nate difficulty is complete the Dark World, as we know, but you got to do it in under three minutes for similar reasons, so people don't take things too slow and too cautious. We want want you guys to go pretty quick. Um, but also, you got to do a Deathless, which we added in Ooh. for an extra little bit of spice. I know, I know. So spicy. Um, so yeah, very difficult, also got to go quick, uh, very excited to see any attempts of this difficulty. Um, we also decided not to include any of the bandages, which are uh, collectible throughout the game, as once you collect a, ba uh, a bandage, um, it sort of saves straight away, so that, like resetting them from platform to platform is kind of difficult, so we thought it'd be best not to include those, um, and it would be preferred if you guys didn't even collect them. Um, as it would, it could potentially complicate things if you did. Um, we also decided not to include any warp zones because, like Nick said, there's a really nice flow once you start attempts, not much menuing, um, and the warp zones are quite out of the way. Uh, and once you complete one, you get brought back to the world menu and you gotta pick your level again, and it kind of breaks up the flow a little bit. So we decided to leave those out. And here on Hero um, Zero, we're all about that flow. <laughs> Hell yeah, we are. Uh, we also decided, as far as characters are uh, concerned, to only use Meat Boy. There are a few characters in Super Meat Boy. Um, generally, they all played quite differently, um, except 8-Bit Meat Boy, which I believe is the same. But for the sake of consistency, we thought, just use Meat Boy, it'll make things a lot easier. Uh, and one final thing is that these runs have got to be glitchless. There are a few little glitches um, out there used for speedrunning and various things like that. Um, and we thought we'd just leave out all that sort of stuff. Expertly explained, Nate. Couldn't have done it better myself. <laughs> oh, thanks, Nick. I was, I was already nervous. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so Nate said it all. Uh, the rules are pretty straightforward. Meat Boy is a pretty straightforward game, right? Uh, each level you're spawned, and there's a level, and you try to get to Bandage Girl. So there's not a lot of opportunity for flexibility. However, as you're probably noting from the runs that you see on screen now, whether they're sped up or not, um, both mine and Nate's, uh, there are different ways to go about the different levels, and a lot of what's really cool about this challenge is the risk management. Especially if you're trying to go deathless, aiming for that Nate difficulty. But even if you're aiming for um, the regular difficulty and trying to just do it fast enough, you need to balance, well, do I take things slowly and um, you know go through the level to avoid a death, which might send me back even further time-wise, or do I take a little bit more of a shortcut to try to get a faster time, but it's a little bit more complicated, it's a little bit more technically challenging, and as a result is a little bit riskier um, in terms of you know adding to that death counter. Uh, there are also different shortcuts, and some people are just better at certain ones. Uh, when you look at our runs, they're not 100% optimal. There are opportunities, there are shortcuts we don't take. Uh, there are different you know, time cycles through the different levels that we try to make or intentionally avoid because they're relatively risky. And so drawing that line is going to be something you're going to have to decide for yourself. Obviously, with the caveat that somebody could be drawing that line differently and thus be doing it faster or with fewer deaths. And I guess that leads me also to the point of um, when it does come to similar runs for the same difficulty level, uh, I know obviously with the Nate difficulty level it'll be deathless, so it'll just be a matter of speed with regards to um, who gets placed higher. And again, do not go for the bandages, because that will complicate things. If bandages are in the way of your already of the route you're already planning to go through a level, sure, it's like fine, but, but you will not be awarded bonus points for getting bandages. Um, but as far as the regular difficulty goes, uh, you'll be ranked based on how quickly you get through the levels and how few deaths you have. And if there's if they're that similar that we can't differentiate based on that, it would probably be based on how clean your gameplay is. And 
I guess one other thing is if it comes down to it, like really down to the wire, like two submissions are within a few seconds of each other. Um, I know that the loading times can vary based on the power of your computer and something and then same with like the ability to like mash through the instant replay section after each level so if it is really really down to the wire between a couple submissions what we will do is look at the individual times of every single level and add up the sum of those times to, to, to be basically the tiebreaker to take out all of the loading times take out all of the instant replay times um, etc which aren't quite as important I don't think we'll get to that stage but if it absolutely is necessary to differentiate between people um, that's that's what we'll do so have that reassurance that if it is close if you feel like your computer you know loading a frame or two slower than somebody else might make a difference uh, it, it won't at the end and yeah I think um, that just about covers it for the rules and, and the points associated with um, or how the ranking will be for that particular challenge. As always, uh, please do record the submission on whatever platform you play it on. Nate and I were looking it up and Meat Boy is available on Android, so if you want to play it on your phone, that's cool. If you want to play it on PS4, Vita, Wii U, I know that's the hottest platform to play Meat Boy. Um, <laughs> feel free to do so. Uh, obviously Steam is going to be the probably easiest way to play through this. Uh, if you don't have the game and really want to participate, let us know. Uh, Nate and I will probably hook you up with the game. Uh, we've already given out a couple copies for it to people that were interested in Hero vs. Zero, so um, do reach out. This is a game that we both love, and this is a series we both love, so you know, the more the merrier. And never underestimate the power of participation points when it comes to these standings. And yeah. Um, Send those submissions in via Discord. You can upload them to YouTube. I know a couple people have actually streamed them. I know Ben has been streaming, uh, CJ Pancake has been streaming, Risa has been streaming some of their Smash attempts, and then um, I think even a couple of the Pokemon battles might have been streamed at some point. And so I'll leave links to their streams in the description below, so do check it out. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these attempts at this challenge ended up on Twitch as well. Uh, but if you have a highlight or a clip from that, you can send that to us as well on Discord. And just like last week, I hope you guys have fun talking about different strategies, the challenge, etc. in the Discord, because again, you have to join the Discord to participate. I don't know if I've made that clear. Nate, do you think that's been clear from the past couple challenges? I think so. You think I so? Think so. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll repeat it next week too, just to be safe. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that just about covers it. I hope you guys are excited for Meat Boy. It's a great game. If you haven't played it, please do. Uh, it's an excellent game. The challenge itself is very accessible in terms of you don't have to play too much of the game or to unlock what's required to participate in this challenge. And if that is still too much of a barrier, Nate and I can try to work with you if you're on PC um, to try to help you out in terms of getting that available earlier. And yeah, have fun with it, guys. You got any, any final words, Nate? <laughs> no, I, I think we covered about everything. Cool. All right, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave a comment or more importantly, reach out in the Discord. And we're looking forward to seeing your submissions. But until next week, this is Moon Knight Zero. And Nate. And this mission is complete. <laughs>